In the next three videos, we're going to look at some use cases of classification models. So let's start in this one by looking at image recognition. Can we identify the images in the pictures? So we are here in KNN use case. And so just a reminder, if you are working along with us, you can find that at drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. And you'll find it right here under after classification. We are doing these KNN use cases. And we've lumped this in with the classification under diagnostic analytics. Why is it happening? Uh, so we're trying to understand why things are happening by figuring out which particular category or label things belong to, to help us explain um, why things are happening. All right, so let's go here. Um, image recognition using KNN. For this particular one, what we're going to do is we're going to use the MNIST data set. That's the handwritten uh, numbers. And uh, so you don't need to import it from your Google Drive. You can fetch it. Um, it's an sklearn.dataset. So from sklearn.datasets, import fetch underscore open ML. And we are doing the MNIST data set. So fetch underscore open ML MNIST 784 version one. So let's first pull that in. It is a fairly large data set. So the loading of it isn't always super quick. Once we do load it in, it does consist of data, which is going to be the 784 pixels, so 784 variables uh, that are combined to make an image of a handwritten number. And then it also has labels. So it has a set of information that says this is a picture of a four. So what we're going to do once it's loaded in is we're going to call x equals MNIST data. That's going to pull in the information about the 784 pixels per image. And we'll take a look at that data here. This is x dot head just shows the top of this. And so you can see here for uh, index zero. So the first picture we can see there's a lot of zeros for a lot of these pixels. Okay. All right, so let's say x, x dot head, and we can see here that the first couple all have a lot of zeros for a lot of pixels. But there's 784 pixels, which is the equivalent of 784 variables. And that's because these pictures are essentially 28 by 28. So if you think about that as a grid, each little square is a variable. Now within that, there's zero if there's nothing there. But if there is something in that image, then the number can go up to, what is it, 254, um, because it's how dark it is, right, in terms of as it goes through grayscale to black. We have here y equals mnist, that's gonna be our, what it calls its target, is what its name is, and these are the labels. So when we look at y dot head, you can see that the first uh, picture is a, Five. This second picture, index one here, is a zero. Uh, so we can pull those labels because we're doing a classification model. We need to be able to test and train and figure out how accurate we are uh, by looking at what the actual labels are. So we'll just load that in. Seems like I'm having internet connections here. All right, in order to do to plot this, so let's say we want to actually look at these different images. We're going to import numpy as np and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then let's pull an example image. So let's take x dot index location two. So if we're looking here, index location two, the label says that's going to be a four. Index location two, we see there's a bunch of zeros in the data. And let's pull that index location to, and we'll call that example. So we can see here, here's all the pixels, one through 784. And in order to see this, so to take those pixels, we need to reformat it so it's 28 by 28. 
So we're going to use numpy for this, so NP, and we're going to reshape and we're going to use something called Ravel. So Ravel and reshape are going to take all of this information and put it into a 28 by 28 grid. Okay, so let's take this and turn it into an image. And then we had our matplotlib as PLT, and this allows us to create the image. We're going to do plt.imshow, and then we're going to use that example image here that's now 28 by 28. And the color map is going to be binary because it's simply um, white and black and grays. So we can see here that it is, in fact, a picture of a four, which matches the label here, which says that index two is a four. All right, let's build our classification model to do our image recognition. Can it identify from the picture what the handwritten number is? We're going to use K nearest neighbors to do this. So from sklearn.neighbors import K nearest neighbors. And as a classification model, we can test the accuracy. So we'll find the accuracy score. We can't use precision or recall because it's not a binary label. There's multiple options. It can identify it as a zero, a one, a two, a three, all the way to nine. So there's 10 different possible labels. And so then the only measurement we have here, our metric is going to be accuracy score. What percentage of the time did it correctly identify the label? All right, let's take this information here and we can decide how we're going to split the test and training data. In this particular data set, there's 10,000 uh, different images. And so you can decide how much you're going to put in the testing data versus the training data. What we have here is that we're going to put 6,000 in the Let's see if this runs. It must be 100,000. 100,000 data points. So we're going to put, let's see, uh, we're going to here, we're putting, it says, what are we putting? 60,000 in the training. And then what this tells you is that the rest of it is going in the test data. So the, by laying it out this way, basically it takes the first chunk and it puts it into the train and then it puts the second chunk into the test. And so you decide where the cutoff is. Previously, we were doing the 80-20 rule, in which case we would make this 80, this 80, and it would take the back 20,000. So you can decide how much you want in terms of your testing and training data. Let's just verify that there really is 60,000 points here. And to do that, we would say, okay, just show me why test. Make sure there's some data points in there. Okay, there is, yeah. Okay. So what it's telling us here is that the length of this is 10,000. So it looks like we have 60,000 in the train and 10,000 in the test. So if you want to recalibrate that, um, you can change that. So this set must here have about 70,000 in it. This must be the, the cap here. So decide how much goes into test and train. Make sure you have enough in the test data set um, so that you can actually test it. Remember in our early examples with K, with K nearest neighbors, we were just testing with four data points uh, to make it very simple to see. Uh, but then of course your accuracy is 50% or 75% uh, uh, because you don't have very many in your test sample. So we do wanna make sure we do have enough, 10,000 is a lot. Uh, but then we also want to have enough data in our training data to make it a more accurate algorithm. So here we're doing 60,000 in the train, and then we can see the final 10,000 is happening here in the test is what this is telling you here. All right. Call the model, fit the model, predict with the model. Uh, and then test its accuracy. So K nearest neighbors, we can decide how many neighbors we should have. Remember, you want an odd number of neighbors so that it can uh, break the tie. Uh, and so here we can do a small number. The idea with a small number is that some of these letters or some of these numbers look a lot alike. Uh, and so if you wanna kind of catch that kind of strange shape boundary, we want smaller number of neighbors. If there were big visual differences in our handwritten letters, we could go wider because then it would go with more of what it's seeing 
around as it takes that average. So we'll go with lower. Uh, if you need to speed up the model, you can also try to make it higher uh, to see how it goes. Well, here we'll run probably pretty fast. So we'll fit the model on our training data, X train, Y train, and then predict on that X test. And so what it's going to give us is it's going to give us the predicted labels for that test data. Remember, there's 10,000 there. So in a moment, we'll see what it gives us as the labels. And then we can always pull an image to see if uh, it has um, correctly labeled a particular example. All right, so according to this, the um, first uh, picture in the test data is a 7 then a two, then a one, and so on. So to look at our accuracy, we compare the predicted labels to the actual labels, and we get an accuracy here of 97%. So let's take a look. 97% accurate. So let's call this example two. We're gonna take X test, and we could take the one that's in the 100 location. So technically it's 101 because the index starts counting at zero. So index location 100, let us pull the pixels for it. Then we can use that reshape and ravel from NumPy to put it into a 28 by 28 image. And then we can plot it to see what it looks like. So X test index location 100 looks like a six. And we can see from Y predict what it actually labeled it as. So we had X test 100 and Y predict 100 and it predicted a six. So for that particular example, it was correct. And of course you could try a different number. So let's try index location 1000. Let's look at it and plot it it's a what is that a nine this one might not be so good this one's kind of a weird shape all right location 100. nine got it so we can see here we have created an a algorithm with what did we say it was 97 percent accuracy at being able to identify a handwritten image as to whether it is a number zero, one, two, three, all the way through nine. So you've just created an image recognition algorithm that we can use to identify uh, images and classify them.